Are open houses a total waste of time or are they a great way to build your real estate business? My answer to that is that it depends. It depends upon your ability to understand and implement three key principles that we're gonna cover today on this episode. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Think Bigger Real Estate. I am your host, Justin Stoddard. And today we are going to be going in depth on open houses, how to be sure that they're not a waste of time and that they are the best way for you to find new buyers today. So before I do that, let me remind you to subscribe to this channel, hit the little bell notification so you don't miss any of the value bombs we're dropping on you. And also remember that this is my passion, helping real estate agents to get unstuck in their business. It's something that I love to do. I've got my contact info down below, guys. You can email me. You can even text me. You can even reach out and schedule time on my calendar to allow me to help you get unstuck. So please take advantage of that. All right, back to what are these three principles that are going to help you to get unstuck in your real estate business? Because they're real. If you don't do these things, as I mentioned before, you could be absolutely wasting your time, spending time in someone else's living room when you should be spending time doing work that's actually productive. So point number one, first and foremost, you have to put the onus on yourself to promote and follow up. When I say promote, I mean, yes, there are sites that will pick up your open houses and let the public know, kind of the major portals out there, real estate portals out there will let people know that they're there. But do not rely solely upon that. And do not rely solely upon just putting some signs out haphazardly. Should you put signs out? Should you be sure that they're listed on these major portals? Yes. However, in addition to that, I would recommend that you personally take it upon you, that if you don't go talk to people and invite people, if you don't actually post it on your own personal social media and potentially even your email list, that nobody's going to show up. If you take on that mentality, that personality, that responsibility, then there's a chance that it will flop. And we don't want that, right? Who wants to have a flop? A couple ideas. Number one is to actually go door knock around your particular home. Pick 10 homes across the street, 10 homes on the same side of the street and say, hey, look, I just want to let you know we're going to experience some extra traffic today because we're having an open house. And oftentimes neighbors want to know what homes are selling for in their neighborhood because obviously however this home sells is going to impact how your home sells. So I'm actually opening it up about 30 minutes early for any neighbors that want to come by and just have a conversation about how this home is positioned and how this might impact their value without any signs up just yet so that we can have just neighbors, friends here nearby to be able to look at it. What you're doing here is you're positioning yourself as somebody who really cares about the area, cares about the neighbors and um, how this might benefit you is kind of how this home sells. When you do that, what you're doing is you're opening up a conversation with people in the neighborhood. An ideal situation for this would be to sell this home at top dollar, of course, and also to pick up additional listings. From the moment that they meet you, for them to realize like, oh my goodness, this is a different real estate agent than the one that we know. This person is on it. So you're promoting up front. You're doing everything you can to get people there. Do circle prospecting around letting people know about that particular open house. On the follow-up side, the same is true that ultimately what you're trying to do is build a relationship and it's hard to do that without having true contact information. So at the open house, you need to be gathering contact information. And I'll give you some clues here in the next tip on how to do that. But just know that after the open house, if you don't do anything else, they are not going to reach out to you. They're not going to proactively seek you out. You have to do that. And guess what? You should be doing that because it's your business, not their business. So keep that in mind that you own it. You own getting people there. You own staying in contact with people after the fact. So take that on. That's your responsibility. That's point number one. Point number two is this. Is it the purpose of an open house? Of course, as I mentioned, is to sell the home for top dollar. But number two, it's to build relationships with other people. How can I come in? How can I serve these neighbors? How can I serve the people in this area, right? What can I do to do that at a high level? You need to think about this. Is that this open house is a way for you to audition to everybody that walks in the door as to how you do business differently than everybody else. And if you want that audition to be five minutes, then it might be tough. What you want to do is have the ability to audition all the way up until the time that they choose to list their home or they choose to buy a home. And the way that you do that is by staying in contact. So get their contact information. It's easier today than it has been in the past. They say, look, the homeowners have requested that everybody that comes in puts down their contact information just so that we know who is here. I know it's a little inconvenient. I'm so sorry to do that to you. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. Yep. That's one way to get their contact information. Make it easy for them. Do it on an iPad. Do, do it in ways that makes it really easy for them to do that. Don't do what many real estate agents do, which is they just kind of stand off. Hey, thanks for coming. Let me know if you have any questions. Awkward. Like, Be fun. Be engaging. Think about those people that you're like, oh my goodness, I can't help but not want to talk to them. Now you might be saying, I'm an introvert, Justin. You're going to have to play the part in the play. 
of being the extroverted person as much as you can. Be delightful. Yay! Be fun. Some people are going to be grumpy. Some people are going to want to push you away. That's okay. Don't take it personally. It's not you. It's them. Okay? And some people are just super personal and they're, they're just in to get in and get out. But what you want to do is be yourself, but amped up just a little bit because that will attract people. The energy, people will be like, oh my goodness, I want to be around this person. They've got high energy. I think they're, they're good at this. We all love supporting people who love what they do. So don't hesitate to go engage people, ask good questions. You know, what are you guys up to today? Is this is this the only home you're looking at? Are you looking at lots of homes? How's it been out there? Right? Just kind of be kind of fun and engaging. Third point is this, position yourself as being different and better than everyone else. Look at the other homes around the area that may be similar to this, to where if people say, you know what? I don't think nope. that this is the right home because the backyard's too small. And you know that that's a concern coming in. It's on a busy road or it's not on a cul-de-sac. It's got a tiny yard or the kitchen's funky. You're not gonna tell that to them. But when they tell you and you say, hey, what's the feedback? If I give one bit, bit of feedback to the owners, what would you say it is? Be like, you know, it's interesting you say that. You're not the only person that said that. And there are some other homes in this area that have a little bit bigger backyards. If you're interested, I'll be done here in about an hour. I'd be more than happy to meet you guys at a coffee shop. If you want to go see some of those homes, I'm happy to see if we can schedule some. Just kind of take it upon you like, hey, these people are out shopping for houses and this isn't the house that they're going to buy. So how can I help them to find the house that they really do want? Think of other ways that you can serve people to really give them insightful information, things that they wouldn't be able to find just by being on Zillow or on Redfin. Tell them unique things about the neighborhood, about you know stories of stuff that will endear them to you and help them to realize that you're not just flipping homes, you're not just selling homes, but you really care about the people that you serve and, and the communities in which you build. And that will cause you to stand out and be different and better. Guys, if you do these three things, you are going to find that open houses can be a very valuable tool for you. Guys, if this has been helpful, again, please subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the things that I'm bringing your way. And do not hesitate to reach out to me. Again, this is my passion is helping people to get unstuck in this amazing industry that has the ability to give you not only great lifestyle, but actually help you to build great wealth. My final request, guys, are these three simple words and they are go think bigger. Have a great day, everybody.